when you put uh, the value here instead of 15 distance it will fix itself and uh, when you go I have to delete what I've done so I have to repeat it again and when you have that in the overall picture I'm gonna press control plus D uh, like a duck uh, control D and it will show me the entire and uh, figure and uh, now if I go and change the uh, distance you can see that everything will change accordingly and now everything is fine for our simulation okay uh, now I'm gonna go and uh, have a parametric sweep for the different distances I want to know what's the mutual inductance or the coefficient the, the coefficients the um, coupling coefficients of these two coils for different distances I want to plot it and in order to do that I'm not going to do it all the time manually I'm going to do it in a very simple way uh, with the parametric method so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and right click on optometrics and add a parametric analysis in the parametric analysis the first tab is sweep definition and I'm going to go and select add and I have only one variable called distance I will go and uh, start the variable from a value 5 millimeter and make sure that when you are going very low uh, uh, the two poles are not touching each other because the distance is not exactly defined as uh, the, the, the surface of these two is basically the center of these two and uh, make sure that uh, because it's the center of the middle point of the coil and the middle point of the coil is the middle of the, the trace and the middle of the trace of the first coil uh, to the middle of the trace of the second coil has some some value for the distance so if this distance is less than the trace the, the trace's thickness then these two coils are going to touch each other so I'm gonna just to be safe I will put four millimeters for a start value of the distance and I'm gonna sweep it all the way to um, let's say 30 millimeters and I'm gonna use a decay uh, count in that case uh, it will give me um, with less number of uh, parameters I can uh, cover uh, the entire things basically uh, in logarith it's a logarithmic uh, way of distributing the parameters in the range that I defined um, the octave count is the log of 2 uh, so the decade is log of 10 uh, so that's the only difference okay so the number of uh, uh, per each decade I'm gonna say uh, let's say 5 sweep so just to make sure that how many parameters you have these are your parameters if you go to the second tab uh, called table you can see the parameters that is going to uh, run to the engine and do the simulations and uh, as you will guess you will save it and you press analyze all uh, simple like that so it will do the analysis and I will uh, come back to you when it finished the analysis um, one thing that I just need to tell you about this analysis is um, right now uh, the Maxwell is going to change distance between two coil remesh the entire extraction, uh, apply the excitation, uh, run the equations and the engine and uh, solve the equations and find the answers and then do it again for seven or eight times. So that will definitely take a lot of time and it will make your life way easier if you were going to do that manually. So you can see that the parametric uh, is, is one way to go for uh, designing uh, to finding the optimum points and see and study the effect of uh, one of the parameters of the coil. Here I just wanted to show you how the uh, progress uh, bars in uh, Maxwell works. So you have here on the right the remaining which is uh, five left out of six. Uh, it's solving one and it shows the number of solved uh, units and these are the overall bar. So when this bar is over it means that the progress is done and the, the bottom one is for each uh, parameter um, I want to ask you guys if you know uh, you can put it in the comment that how you can uh, ask this uh, engine to solve at a time more than one um, that would be a very good uh, uh, problem solver for me at least uh, because it's only using uh, one-eighth of the power resources that I have, the computational resources that I have. 
and I think I can go at least up to seven solving at the same time uh, but I, I couldn't find uh, any way to do that so if you guys know the answer please uh, share it with me under this uh, video in the comment section uh, that would be helpful for me as well so I can as you can see when one of this uh, parameters is getting solved you have this and on top bar up there and it says that remaining is now four okay that's it okay now the simulation is done and uh, we can uh, look at the results uh, if you go on the table that we had and if you uh, right click on that uh, you can update that and if you double click now you should have different distances and different values. As you can see, the uh, coefficient coupling is always one because it's a self coupling. But the coefficient coupling between uh, Rx and Tx uh, is growing, getting larger and larger when the distance is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, the amount of the matrix Rx uh, is not changing. Um, it's you will see a little bit of change and that's is because uh, this self uh, inductance is uh, the sum of the self inductance and the mutual inductance of the other transmitter as well so you when when the other transmitter is getting um, closer based on the direction of the current excitation current that you define uh, it will basically either add or remove from the uh, the effect basically will add or remove, will basically steal some flux. And uh, you can see from some regions you have smaller and then it gets again uh, bigger and then it gets smaller. So that's uh, how it basically works. Uh, one other way that you can represent that is by right clicking on the results and create an magnetostatic report and then go to the rectangular part and in the rectangle plot you can actually go ahead and um, select the coefficient that you want to plot and I'm gonna plot it based on distance when I press plot it will plot it for you and as you can see when the distance is higher the coefficient is smaller which what, which is what we ex expected um, one last thing that I was going to show you guys is to uh, also be able to see what's going on in terms of electromagnetic uh, inside between these two coils. So you can go ahead, right click and select object and you select the error and then right click on that and on the field you can go ahead and select whatever field that you are uh, um, interested to look. Um, I would go with B, magnetic uh, uh, field, and I will go with the magnetic uh, field uh, inside the air. I don't want to plot it on the surface only, and that should give me a plot like this. Um, it's not very informative right now in this shape. So maybe I can go ahead and double click. Sorry, that's the wrong plot. I go ahead and double click uh, on the plot that I have. Oh, sorry, it's not double click. It's right click. <laughs> I modify the uh, RTP and then over here you can go and select the logarithmic scale. Then you can see more, and uh, you can also change um, the way that this represents. Um, you can make it like a cloud, or uh, but that that basically makes sense. The numbers that you see here, uh, you can increase the quality of the plot, and. Uh, Things like this. Also, if you go and select the model, you actually find it at, for example, the RX code. 
I just double click on one of the terminals. Now you, you have a better view. For some reason, I don't know why, you get, um, you get a better view when you do something like that. It actually makes it uh, transparent. And now you can see, when you click, again, it's giving you something like this. But when you click on one of these terminals or something like this, uh, it's trying to highlight the terminal and make the, the lights uh, a bit dimmer and transparent. So now you can see the effect and you can see that the current is going in and generating all this uh, uh, B and G and J and uh, K. Okay, so that's good. Uh, that's good for now and in my next tutorial I'm going to go uh, and show you how you can actually calculate the uh, power um, transfer power efficiency in Simpler. And I'm going to also talk about the dynamic inductance and how you can uh, import a dynamic inductance uh, structure from Maxwell into the simpler and do the simulations. Um, that's good for now. And if you have any other questions, please leave your in the your question in the comment uh, section below the video. And uh, that's that's I guess it. Thank you for watching.